If you have ever taken a trip to Sun Top Mountain in the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest, Washington State, then you may have come across an old wooden structure, the Sun Top Fire Lookout. Built in the early 1930s, the building was used by the U.S. Forest Service to keep watch for any fires in the nearby woodland. At one point, Sun Top Fire Lookout would have been manned 365 days a year, complete with a bed for staff who were stationed there on rotation. The single-story lookout house overlooks the scenic valleys of the White River and Huckleberry Creek, but you're not here for an informative tourist guide. You probably don't care about the frankly fascinating history of the lookout and how it was used as part of the aircraft warning service during World War II, watching for enemy planes. No, you're here because something much darker lurks inside the Sun Top Fire Lookout. And even though it appears to be a simple one-story tall wooden structure, it certainly is not short on space. SCP-3333 refers to an anomaly that the Foundation discovered inside the Sun Top Fire Lookout House. The building's interior is a single square room measuring 14 feet by 14 feet, with large windows on all four sides. When standing inside Sun Top Fire Lookout, looking up at the wooden ceiling, one will immediately notice a trap door. No big deal, right? A lot of places have a ceiling entrance to a small crawl space. There's probably nothing behind that trap door, apart from a dusty old attic. There's a latch that maybe once had a padlock there, but not anymore. Opening the trap door will reveal a collapsible ladder. Should anyone be brave or indeed foolish enough to begin to climb, then they'll soon find themselves right back where they started, inside Sun Top Fire Lookout. Or so it will seem. The thing about being in a place like the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest that surrounds Sun Top Fire Lookout is that woodland areas are teeming with life. Not just plants and trees, but birds and other animals of the forest. You can never truly be alone in a setting like that. There is always life everywhere around you. So when you ascend the ladder and climb right back into the Sun Top Fire Lookout, that is the first most noticeable difference you will find. It may take a while at first, but the nagging absence of something unusually so abundant in a forest will eventually become obvious. It's quiet, far too quiet. No birdsong or the sound of distant calls from woodland critters, just silence all around. Anyone ascending the ladder will find themselves in a copy of Sun Top Fire Lookout's interior, one story higher than the ground level of the small wooden building, with the stairs leading up to the front door getting taller each time to reach up to the higher and higher building. Now you know the SCP Foundation and the types of bizarre interdimensional anomalies that they're used to dealing with. Perhaps SCP-3333 is a mirror dimension, or a plane of existence where sound doesn't travel. It certainly seems to be identical to the Sun Top Fire Lookout, save for the lack of any organic life outside. Of course, it's what you'll find living inside SCP-3333 that you may want to worry about. Climbing higher up the next ladder and through the next trapdoor every time with the same result. You appear at another copy of Sun Top Fire Lookout, each one higher up than the last. What first seemed to be an innocuous, unassuming wooden building is now an endless ascension up into the heavens, towards the unknown in silence, without a shred of plant or animal life outside. As you climb, perhaps you start to think about how much higher these copies go. This might even be the biblical Jacob's Ladder connecting heaven and earth. That would be nice, wouldn't it? If you were gradually climbing your way up to paradise, it might make it worth the trip. But SCP-3333 is nothing that pleasant. You wouldn't be the first to attempt this long climb. When the SCP Foundation first discovered SCP-3333, a research detail set up an on-site base camp to examine this spatial anomaly. Their first exploration involved sending a member of D-Class personnel, designated D-4F-68A, up the ladder. His D number is a hexadecimal code that when translated to text reads O, oh, so we'll call him that for brevity's sake. During the first day's exploration, O was able to climb 184 iterations of SCP-3333, communicating with head researcher Dr. Williams below. On the second day, 
O could see a pair of figures standing motionless on a nearby ridge, but the pair could not be seen by Dr. Williams and the other researchers at the base camp. Both figures disappeared shortly after O spotted them with the camera he had been issued, and he felt uneasy, almost certain that he saw them point at him. The next day, at the 345th copy of Sun Top Fire Lookout, O's behavior started to noticeably change. Previously, he had been anxious about the long climb and hadn't questioned directions given to him by Dr. Williams. Now he seemed to speak more casually, resisting instructions, asking Williams to climb back down and even calling her Doc instead of Doctor. O also reported seeing writing on the walls, but there was no evidence of this on his camera. It appeared that something had started to affect him. It was when O reached level 527 that things seemed to change more dramatically. Rather than SCP-3333 continuing upwards, the copies of Sun Top Fire Lookout no longer had a trap door or ladder. They seemed to be arranged side by side in a grid-like pattern. Stepping out of the main doorway, O remarked on the lack of sunlight and a walkway that connected directly to the front door of the next iteration of SCP-3333. O complained about the lack of natural light, and again requested to be allowed back down. Dr. Williams instructed O to use the flashlights he was provided, but they wouldn't activate, and their spare batteries had vanished. O then noticed a sudden movement, and just then his microphone and camera feed went dead almost as if someone had turned them off. It appeared that SCP-3333 had something else lurking up there. Dr. Williams oversaw the second expedition into SCP-3333. This time, members of Mobile Task Force Mod Zero, also known by the codename Characteristic Egg in Spaces, were sent up the ladder. Their ascent through the various copies of Sun Top Fire Lookout were not as eventful as O's, with no signs of mysterious figures or anxious feelings that O seemed to feel as he climbed. When they reached level 527, where the copies of the lookout stopped progressing upwards and spread out in a pattern instead, their lights and equipment all seemed to be in working order. However, as the MTF team split up, one by one they encountered some sort of anomaly or an effect of SCP-3333 that caused each of them to vanish into the dark. Either that, or something took them. These MTF units reappeared confused, and Mod 5, the team's leader, Graham Purcell, issued an order to retreat and the entire squad went back down the ladders for several days, until they finally reached the base camp again. The members of Mod Zero were adamant they did not wish to climb SCP-3333 again, but Dr. Williams was beginning to understand more of the anomaly's effects. It appeared to cause abrupt changes to people's personalities, along with some sort of phenomenon that caused things to appear and disappear the higher one climbed. Assuming these were the result of a mimetic effect, Dr. Williams dispatched a counter-mimetic specialist for the next expedition. This specialist was a blind, deaf, and mute woman known as Annette, or the Null Walker, who communicated via a signaling system embedded in her hand but was otherwise immune to any mimetic influences. Observed by Dr. Williams and Graham Purcell at base camp, Annette made her way to the top of SCP-3333, reporting that she was aware of someone watching her from outside the copies of Sun Top Fire Lookout. On her body camera, a flicker of motion occurred, something looking through the windows that ducked out of frame when the camera passed in its direction. At the apex of SCP-3333, Annette kept her flashlight off, but reported that she could detect blood, following it to what she assumed was a body. Sounds of movement surrounded her, and as Annette switched on her flashlight, Williams and Purcell saw that it wasn't a body in front of her. Instead, it was a pile of rotting organs, decomposing muscles, and discarded bones. And among the pile was a metal dog tag that read, MTF Mod 5, Graham Purcell the same man who was sitting next to Dr. Williams at base camp. Well, the same man on the outside, at least. The explanation for everything going on inside SCP-3333, all these strange occurrences and disappearances, finally came in a video sent from Dr. Williams' cell phone. In it, a panicked Williams, covered in blood, was fleeing from something at the top of the recursive stack of SCP-3333. There was no mimetic effect at the apex of the Sun Top Fire lookout copies, 
Nothing was causing the people that the Foundation sent up to act unlike themselves. They simply weren't themselves anymore. According to her frantic video, Dr. Williams had discovered the truth about what else was hiding within SCP-3333. With just the right amount of vagueness and intrigue, the research team had been drawn in. It was as if they'd been lured in by the lights of an anglerfish, realizing their grim fate only too late. The D-Class O, the MTF team, even Annette had been replaced. An unknown group of entities on the top level of SCP-3333 had been carefully observing them, waiting until they would not be seen to slip in and switch places. These entities had been creating imagined anomalous effects, like O seeing figures that weren't really there, as a way of luring more bodies further up the stack. They wanted the Foundation to keep sending expeditions into SCP-3333 to keep them coming back. The mass of organs, musculature, and bones that Annette had stumbled across revealing the ruse had once belonged to Graham Purcell, before he was replaced. You see, the entities residing in SCP-3333 weren't just copying people. They weren't possessing them or mind-controlling them, or even shape-shifting to steal a person's likeness. They were taking skin. These creatures hollowed out Graham, O, Annette, and the MTF team, pulling out their innards and crawling their way inside filling these fleshy puppets and leaving their internal organs to rot. These hollowed out people became vessels for the entities of SCP-3333 to hide in. The whole thing had been a trap, intentionally exploiting human weaknesses, intrigue, and unanswered questions. You know what they say about curiosity, and these entities used it to bring more potential vessels to the top of SCP-3333. They pretended to be the people who they had replaced, mm. imitating them so the Foundation would send more personnel to explore the tower, increasing their supply of skins. Graham's dog tag had revealed the deception, and Dr. Williams had escaped up SCP-3333. The members of the research team that had already been replaced were hot on her tail, determined to catch and hollow her out too, and by the end of her video, they had succeeded. A month later though, a team delivering supplies realized what had happened and the trap door was sealed. Sun Top Fire Lookout was put under permanent guard but at least 50 personnel were killed or replaced by one of the entities. A new mobile task force, Lambda-1 Maxwell's Demons, was created to hunt down and neutralize any of the entities that had escaped SCP-3333. But it's still unknown how many left the tower and are still out there somewhere waiting to use someone's curiosity about the strange and unknown against them. Now check out SCP-1861, the crew of the HMS Wintersheimer, and SCP-3999, I'm at the center of everything that happens to me, for more tales of anomalous terror from SCP Explained.